Perfect, perfect. So thank you very much for joining. My name is Rainer Koppitz. I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, Katek SE based uh, in Munich. And uh, I want to start with a little bit of a warning. Uh, Katek uh, is not doing some, some kind of uh, fancy cloud software or uh, blockchain or cryptocurrency, fintech or delivery services, whatever. I mean, we are really doing, um, you know, kind of real business, real tangible business. We are uh, developing and producing uh, modules and uh, products or to be even more precise, electronic uh, complex modules and products. So that's really uh, tangible uh, business here. So why are we um, in this business? Um, the the answer is that if you look into um, electronics, um, then you see that more and more products and systems in the markets um, are based on electronics. They have electronics insights, they have sensors insights, they have memories insights, they have kind of processors insights, um, they communicate with other devices and with, um, and with people as well. That's what we call the electronification of the world. So dump devices from the past are becoming smart devices in the future, and that's um, being valid for all kind of you know categories of goods and products and systems and on the other hand side um, what you can see is that the the, the share of the value add per product um, you know is becoming more and more electronics what does it mean um, all the products and systems they are becoming more and more smart they are becoming smarter and this means that the let me say degree of of electronics inside the the share of electronics inside is increasing year on year perfect example is the car i mean this was something like 10 percent or less in the 90s um, the electronics value add was already at you know more than 20 in 2005 and in the meanwhile uh, when you meet with um, you know car developers um, you know the current models they are bringing to the market right now they are going to 50 percent and more with regards of the um, electronics content within uh, the cars and um, and now we come uh, to what Katek is doing here because I mean someone needs to develop and manufacture all of these electronic modules and products together with the European industry. So, or to make it even more concrete, together with um, our customers, like uh, companies like Porsche, companies like uh, Thiesmann, like uh, KUKA, like Bosch, or like GE Healthcare. So that's all our loyal customers. We are developing with them the electronic components and products, and we are manufacturing them for them. And uh, you see a lot of examples here um, um, on the slide. I mean, for example, um, you know, a lot of electronics in the KUKA robots um, you uh, will see is coming from uh, Katek. Um, what mind detection um, uh, devices for NGO uh, companies. I mean, they are coming uh, from Catex with regards to the electronics or blood analyzers in the healthcare industry or uh, solar storage um, uh, systems. The performance electronics inside the hard and software is uh, very often uh, coming uh, from Catex. So that's what that's what we are doing here. And um, you know we have a very very clear vision, saying that we want to make Katek the leading European powerhouse for high value electronics. So the preferred electronics partners for all of those key industries, um, you know which we find um, which we find in Europe. And we are focusing there on the most attractive uh, markets. And you know, attractiveness is meaning that electronics is making a difference in those systems, and it's not just in you know electric teeth brushes where electronics is just a, just a commodity, just a cost factor. In all the industries we are serving, electronics re really is playing a major role and is driving the innovation of those um, industries. In the meanwhile, um, you know, we are um, already the number two in Germany in our industry, and we are among the top five um, in Europe in the meanwhile. Um, you know, some are saying you are the number three, some are saying you are the number four, but I mean, what's really clear, we are among the top five in Europe now, and that brings a lot of advantages with it. 
Um, we managed to um, uh, quadruple uh, the revenues within uh, four years. Um, so we increased the revenues within four years by almost um, half a billion um, euro. And the, the latest uh, forecast or, or guidance for the capital market um, was at 635 um, million um, this fiscal year. So meaning we are continuing this very, very strong uh, growth growth uh, here. Um, we have more than uh, 3,000 uh, employees in the meanwhile. Um, we have our headquarters um, in Munich, but a very um, international uh, footprint in the meanwhile. So, um, you know, beyond Germany, uh, we have uh, three Eastern European sites in uh, Bulgaria, um, in the Czech Republic, um, and also in Hungary. Um, you know, in the meanwhile, we have a, we have a, a factory and a, um, um, a location where we are doing electronics prototyping together with our customers in uh, Malaysia. And our newest um, um, two acquisitions are in the Northern American market, where we did the closing um, of a deal in Canada. So the future um, Catec uh, Canada, the former um, uh, Sigma point. Um, LTD, and we, um, you know, also invested now in the U.S. And uh, you know, we announced to buy the Alabama-based uh, company Nextech with excellent uh, high-tech customers like, for instance, uh, Boeing or uh, Space SpaceX. And we are doing this not because we want to conquer the North American market, but because um, if you want to be a leader in Europe, you also need to serve your European customers um, in other um, important continents, like for instance, in uh, Northern uh, America. The aim or the ambition um, of the company, and we are coming closer and closer here, is uh, in the midterm 1 billion revenue and 100 million um, EBITDA. And that's, as you will see, is a very realistic um, ambition here. Um, what we are doing is we had three, uh, I would say, stages of uh, our M&A strategy. In the first phase, we acquired a lot of companies to come to a decent uh, size. Um, at a very in a very short time, uh, because I mean that's important for the purchasing power. Normally, seventy percent of your cost base are uh, material costs, so chips, for instance, or memories. Um, so this was to be to get to a decent size in a very short uh, period uh, of time. The second advantage there is, of course, that you are on a same level like your customers, like uh, the larger German Mittelstand, European Mittelstand, and even you know industrial conglomerates like Bosch. So it's important that you are not a tiny, small player, but that you are really you know one of the major players in Europe. So this was the first phase. The second phase was, and that's why I'm showing the slide here, is to complete the value chain. If you want to be the partner of an industrial player in Europe, you need to offer all the value chain elements for electronics. And that starts with the software and hardware development. For very often, you go into kind of a co-engineering with your customer, and many projects, um, they start there. Then it goes to um, rapid prototyping, where your customers want you to do the first electronic prototypes together with their development, their engineering uh, departments. And many of our customers today, they started with uh, prototyping. Then it goes through the important supply chain management with regard to uh, material management and purchasing, especially in times of the shortage uh, which we have today, really a competitive advantage to have the best team in the industry there. And then it comes to the classic electronics uh, production, including uh, cabling, plastic injection, um, et cetera, et cetera. You go through the testing and more and more your customers are also asking you to produce the complete product for them, including uh, uh, the box build, including the displays, including the cabling, and then shipping the complete product to their um, uh, end customers. So that um, was the, the third, uh, this was the second phase of our M&A strategy. In the meanwhile, we are covering all of those elements of the value chain. So we are complete here. And now we are in the third phase um, of the M&A strategy, meaning that we are um, completing our geographical footprint. So we asked our customers, I mean, what's important to them where we should be 
in future. And it's very clear that the North American market, but also the Nordic market um, are clear um, uh, kind of uh, targets here. And the strong growth we are producing, um, as you saw, is based on two footprints, uh, based on two pillars. The first one is the strong organic growth, which we have in certain businesses. And the second one is a sound uh, buy and build M&A strategy. So we acquired within the last four years something like 13 uh, companies and integrated them. And that's something which is going to continue. And that's also the reason we, why we are right now doing a capital increase, which will be finalized uh, before uh, Christmas. Here you can see the very, very strong organic growth in um, three selected high growth markets we are in. Uh, let me start with renewables. Um, if you buy a residential solar storage system uh, today in Europe, you have a 50% chance uh, that all of the power electronics inside, which is defining the efficiency of the system, the software and the hardware, is coming today from Katek with no regards whether you buy it from Zonen or from Fiesmann or from Zenec, normally the power electronics is coming uh, from Katek. And as this segment, um, you know, solar storage systems, um, you know, is growing over proportionally, um, you know, we are also going, um, you know, into a strong growth mode. So after the first three quarters, we have been at 84 million. Um, this will be something like uh, 100 million something already this fiscal year. And I'm pretty confident that next fiscal year, this will show a growth of at least 50% um, again. Uh, then the telecare one, I wanted, don't want to go into this, but that is serving um, the, the trend of, let me say, um, more and more elderly people who want to have their own life and not going into a home for elderly people, but doing this at home. So you need kind of emergency intelligence systems, etc., which enable them to stay at home, but still the relatives can sleep well because they know there's kind of a alarm uh, systems uh, in place. And we are developing and delivering them in many countries to um, organizations like the Red Cross, et cetera, et cetera. And then let me come to the uh, immobility part, also strong growing, but um, which will really, really show strong growth um, from next year um, onwards, because today we are serving, um, we are serving uh, Porsche and Audi with uh, kind of um, ICCPDs, which is which is mobile uh, charging units, a very high sophisticated charging units. So charger to charge the car, the electric vehicle um, at home. But the real growth booster uh, will happen next year when we come up with our own customizable charger, the so-called um, Ghost One, which is uh, the best charger uh, in the AC market, uh, 22 kilowatt um, in the market. And we will not sell this under the brand of, of Katek. We will sell this under the brand of our customers so that every customer with access to the market has the opportunity to come up with the best charger in the European market. And all of it, the software, the hardware, et cetera, everything inside is coming uh, from us here. And uh, this is how the market uh, will, will develop. What you will see is that, I mean, 22, 23, the market for those kind of chargers in Europe, I mean, is still pretty, pretty small because the, let me say, explosion of the numbers of electric vehicles in the market, I mean, it's just at the very uh, beginning, but over the next couple of years, we will get to um, 65 million of uh, charging units installed base um, in 2035. And with the strongest and best system um, in the market, we will over proportionally um, you know, take advantage of this strong market growth beginning next year. It's ready to develop and we will develop the entire system in our factories in the Czech Republic and also in Leipzig. Yeah, let's uh, move to the to the first three quarters. I mean, the, the best message is um, we even accelerated further uh, the growth, um, meaning that uh, full year is uh, full year is at uh, twenty three percent of growth. But in the Q three, um, you know, we even showed uh, thirty seven percent of growth compared to the Q three in uh, twenty one, which is largely being driven by those. 
uh, growth segments um, like uh, solar renewables, um, um, etc. Um, then secondly, um, the operating results, so the uh, EBITDA was uh, year to date at the same level, absolute level like last year, so 21 million, despite all the headwinds which we have, like the margin pressure, like the shortage, like the material uh, price increases here. And uh, we decided um, um, that for both for the growth, but also for the uh, margin, to keep the guidance, uh, you know, stable uh, for the entire year, and be absolutely, you know, um, positive and optimistic to uh, get there. Of course, we also decided, but I have a slide on that as well, to expand our management team, and we announced the acquisition of the Canadian uh, Sigma Point. We are in the middle of the post-merger integration process right now, and we announced the acquisition of the U.S.-based. Next Tech, um, which will uh, join our, uh, you know, Team Blue, then um, in the most probably first week um, of January. Um, just um, you know, with regards to the Q3 financials, I want to point out uh, a few uh, facts here. I mean, everybody is complaining about the component shortage and the disruption of the global supply chain. Uh, honestly speaking, uh, we don't do that. Uh, we, we are just, you know, managing the situation, um, you know, as good as we can. So um, we increased the cross margin uh, by 14.3% uh, uh, percent from 118 to 135 um, million. Um, as I said, the absolute EBITDA is at the same niveau, the 21 million, like uh, in the last year. So despite um, all the, uh, the headwinds and our trade working uh, capital, our trade working capital is um, still at the same right range like last year at 23% uh, something. So we are managing this as you know, well um, as we can. Honestly speaking, there's one number I really don't like, and that's, of course, the uh, DIO, the day's um, inventory um, outstanding, with 130, um, you know, six days. Uh, that's uh, much too much right now, but, you know, I'm seeing this as a really, really big uh, opportunity because we can bring this down, um, you know, during the next year to something like below 100 days uh, DIO, and this will set free from our inventory 30 to 50 million euro in free cash. 30 to 50 million in free cash, which will help us uh, to further grow uh, by further um, acquisition. So we will turn this into an um, advantage, of course. So everybody's uh, talking about the shortage. We have a real-time uh, BI system as we are one of the largest buyers um, you know, in the electronics industries in Europe. So what I can tell you from our real-time uh, BI uh, um, uh, system is that, and that's the good message, the lead times are coming down. And the lead times, that's exactly, I mean, um, how long does it take when I order some components now until they arrive in the warehouse? The lead times are coming down. They are not increasing anymore. They are coming down. Secondly, the biggest burden is disappearing. And the biggest burden are the Chinese lockdowns due to the zero COVID policy. And over the last couple of days, China uh, wisely decided to stop this uh, zero COVID policy. And this was right now the biggest burden in the supply chain uh, disaster which we had. Then third, we have today all the strategic buffer inventories and we have full order books. So we will convert the strategic buffer inventories into free cash flow at the same time reducing the high backlog of our loyal customers here. And the fourth one is we can now turn again our CATEC purchasing power with something like half a billion of purchasing volume uh, next year to purchase systematically price reductions for 23, and this will increase our gross margins significantly and hence um, will land into the EBITDA. All of this we are doing with the best management team uh, I'm always claiming uh, in the industry. Um, um, just to point out, um, you know, two people here, new on board is Petra Becker, our chief transformation officer. And I mean, she's starting now and will help 
and coordinate all the activities to convert the um, strategic inventories into uh, cash uh, during the next uh, year and make sure that we protect our margins uh, despite all of the headwinds. And also with beginning of 1st of January, Klaus-Peter Bader, who successfully managed our Memmingen entity, including the extremely successful um, um, solar business. I mean, he will become the chief sales officer of the entire uh, group globally and will make sure that together with our customers and together with new logos, we will continue the strong organic growth which we are stowing. And the, the target is always organic growth being 10% or even more every year. So with this management team, we will get um, to uh, all the targets. So that's again the uh, profile um, of uh, the company we just um, we just uh, announced to acquire uh, with uh, Next Tech in Alabama. That's close to Huntsville, where we have kind of a technological hub in the U.S. And uh, in the combination with the Canadian company Sigma Point, we now also can use this to get to uh, access to high tech customers uh, in the U.S like SpaceX, like uh, Boeing, uh, like Strata. We can use this and do the prototyping and the small uh, batch production in Alabama. And once it's going bigger and bigger, we can transfer this to Canada, very cost efficient uh, site, by the way, and can do also larger productions uh, for them. So very, very nice um, you know, kind of combination. And the two entities together, uh, Katek Canada, together then with Katek Alabama, I mean, they will be our, our hub or our string, how we say, especially for the defense and the aerospace industry, which is a very interesting industry for electronics and new to Katek. That's the, uh, that's the capital increase we are doing right now. As you know, before uh, uh, Christmas, um, you know, every existing and also new shareholders can buy our shares um, you know, at uh, Euro 16.15. Uh, so uh, this will mean that at the end of the day, it's close to 20 million uh, fresh money. Why do we do it? Uh, everybody's saying you don't need it. Yes, that's true, we don't need it. But I want to fuel, let me say, the further growth by M&A uh, for the upcoming uh, next uh, two to four uh, quarters. So we are doing this right now in order to have the necessary firepower to buy uh, in a value accretive way further acquisition targets um, being aligned to our uh, strategy. And now the last slide. Um, so where uh, do we go? I mean, if you just do a calculation, uh, a math and saying, um, if you really end up with uh, 635 million this year, and maybe it's uh, even more, um, and then we go for strong organic growth, 10% or more for the next two to three years. And then we add another of uh, 150 million euro of uh, inorganic revenue. So through M&A, and you take into consideration that alone Next Tech and Sigma Point, so the two uh, Northern American targets, could possibly add 100 million to this. I mean, yet then you see that we are already, um, you know, at 1 billion um, uh, of, of, of revenue. And the clear management target here and the plan behind is showing that, I mean, all of this will get us to something like 10% EBITDA. So meaning 100 million um, EBITDA with all the, let me say, building blocks, uh, which I described uh, during the presentation. So finally, I would say uh, 23 will be the year, will be the year. It's gonna be beautiful and we will continue with the best management team in this um, industry our way to become uh, the number one in Europe. And as I said, we are already very close to that. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for your presentation. We still have uh, five minutes left. And uh, currently there's just one question in the chat. I'm not sure if I understand it correctly, so I, I will just read it out loud. Um, what could possibly go wrong in a project that is going to make losses? And do you have projects uh, which made already significant losses and what were the reasons? Yeah, so in our, in our industry, uh, the worst uh, thing um, you know, that, that can happen, and that's, I mean, what, what happened in many cases um, you know, over the last past uh, 18 months is that, I mean, you are fully responsible 
to source the material, to manufacture everything, and then deliver it to the, to the customer according to the contract you have. So the worst thing um, that can happen is that, um, you know, the material is not available at the market and you only can buy it at huge extra cost, for instance, from uh, component brokers, like for instance, chips which was the case in many, many times. So what you need to do here is to have a very, very close cooperation with your customers, telling the customers, look, if I have the creativity to source those kind of components at the market, and this comes, let me say, with 10 times the costs uh, which we originally um, had in the calculation, then I need the escalation instance um, um, in your company, like in Porsche, for instance, so that within 50 minutes, we get to a decision whether we should source um, this material at the extra cost or not. And if you say source it, then you have to take the extra cost because we cannot finance this from our margins. So that's the, that's the let me say, the, the biggest burden uh, we had, uh, you know, for the last kind of uh, 18 months. And then, of course, you also need to price to, to, to build the normal price increases you have to your customers because everything is getting more expensive right now. All the components, all the all the energy, the gas, etc. And I mean, you need to be very, very, let me say, ruthless with your customers, with no regards what's standing in the contract and saying, look, that's a special situation. Sorry to say, we need to increase prices by, for instance, 5%. And these, these are hard discussions, but we are doing them very, very successfully. Many price increases are already effective and many more of them will be effective from 1st of January. Okay. And uh, you currently have uh, quite the aggressive uh, growth strategy. Where do you see a CATEC maybe in five or 10 years? Uh, in, fi in five years, uh, we will be the number one in Germany, uh, in the, the number one in Germany and in Europe. Today, number one in Germany and Europe is a company called uh, Zollner. But I mean, uh, we are uh, going to first do the 1 billion uh, in Europe and then we will overtake them and we will be the market uh, leader in, in Europe. Um, we are on the way to go there. And with this market leader position, we will have a lot of advantages in terms of, uh, um, um, in terms of fixed cost degression, purchase power. Um, and I mean that all the major industry players in Europe um, you know, want to um, put us on their shortlist when they have new, um, um, new, new, new uh, kind of uh, new kind of tenders. And the beauty here then will be that there will be a real alternative to American companies and to Asian player players for the German and the European industry. And uh, what will the the M and A strategy look like in the future? Currently, you're you're quite on the acquisition part will that stop at some point or will you continuously acquire companies yeah we will continue we will continue so um, on my wish list on my bucket list i still have uh, uh, you know companies in scandinavia uh, th this is the most uh, um, interesting uh, part of the market in europe and uh, you know we are still not there but this will change most probably um, over the course of the next year. Um, and then we are also looking for something in addition to our uh, Malaysia factory uh, in Asia as well. Mm -hmm. And another question from the chat is, uh, how many wall boxes and charging stations can you produce per year and uh, at what capacity? Yeah, uh, the answer is quite, that's, that's a key advantage that we have because we are covering the full value chain. We are not only developing that and then have a partner who is doing something in China manufacturing it, we are manufacturing that in our own factory. So if the market wants 250,000 a year, you know, I produce 250,000 a year. If the market wants 2 million uh, charges per year, I will produce 2 million charges a year because it's all in our hands. We have the best people for that. All right. So we have uh, 10 seconds left. I think that's not enough time for another question. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great presentation. Thank you for all the answers. Yeah. Thanks for listening.